Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Adonis King. I have a show called All X Cast. It's on Blog Talk Radio, backslash All X Club, and every Saturday at 1 o'clock along with my co-host, Eros King. And uh, we've been talking a lot on our show recently about the oil apocalypse. And one of the things that has come up continuously has been... Uh, how does this fit into prophecy? What is this? Uh, does there biblical prophecies? There's been uh, talk of, uh, of course, the Hopi prophecy, seventh uh, uh, prophecy of the Hopi. And now I have come across something that I think may suggest that if this is not prophetic, that somebody has some pre-planning going on here. Uh, it was a source that I've known about for a while. I decided to go back and take a look at it with this new knowledge of what's going on with the BP oil spill, the air quality, all the things I've been watching. Because like you, I'm just trying to connect the dots. Here is something I found. I don't believe anybody's brought this up yet on uh, video, but I am doing it for the first time, and I think some of you will need to check this out. Now, I will read this as presented by The Vigilant Citizen at thevigilantcitizen.com. Uh, this is their writing. Uh, go there if you like and look up the Denver Airport. Now, the airport was built in 1995 on 34,000 acres. Its construction forced the Stapleton International Airport to shut down, although it used more gates and runways than the DIA. The initial cost of construction was $1.7 billion, uh, but the final project elevated the bill to $4.8 billion, $3.1 billion over budget. Numerous irregularities have been reported, including the construction of the site. Different contractors have been hired for different parts of the airport, and they've been fired after their job was done. The lead observer observers to believe that there was a strategy to make sure nobody had the full scope of the project. 110 million cubic yards of earth have been moved, way more than is usually required. This arose suspicion of construction taking place underground. 5,300 miles of fiber optics were installed for communications. Uh, USA coast to coast is 3,000 miles in comparison. Fueling systems that can pump 1,000 gallons of jet fuel per minute, this amount is totally absurd for commercial airport. Granite imported from all over the world even if the project was already grossly over budget. Construction of a huge tunnel system, trucks that can circulate in them, and underground trains. Most of those aren't used at the moment. Analysis of the data available makes me reach at least one conclusion. The gigantic structure will ev eventually become much more than a regular commercial airport. It has the capacity to handle a huge amount of people and vehicles, leading observers to think that the structure might be used as a military base, and others even add that it will be used as a civilian concentration camp in the near future. I'm going to skip down a little bit um, in this particular article. You can read the rest of that, but I wanted to get ex to the mural. Okay, first of all, this mural is divided into four walls. The mural was painted by Leo Taguma. Uh, and are supposed to represent peace, harmony, and nature. But I'm not getting these messages at all. When you analyze the symbolism of the murals, you realize that they are, tell a terrifying story of future events about to happen, as if it were some sort of prophecy. There are specific social and political references and other occult details that basically turn these paintings into a New World Order manifesto. Tanguma reportedly confirmed that he was given guidelines for the painting and was paid one hundred thousand dollars for the first ones. He later denied he was ever given instructions and refuted any questions regarding hidden meetings in his paintings. Previously, Leo Taguma murals were typically Chicano art, uh, politically charged and commun community oriented. However, his work at the DIA sends a totally different vibe, giving me a gut feeling that he simply drew someone else's vision. Let's look at the paintings one by one. The first one's called Peace and Harmony with Nature. So the airport's official website says that the name of the mural is Peace and Harmony with Nature. Really? At the center of the piece, saddened children and extinct animals and plant species. Listen carefully. Saddened children, extinct animal and plant species. In the background, a forest of fire. And further back, a city on fire wafting up with chemicals. An interesting fact is that the city has never... Has, has been retouched and painted over many times during the years as it represents something important to the creators. It seemed surrounded, as it will, by a colored haze, as if it were attacked by a biochemical weapon. One of the children holds a Mayan tablet depicting the end of civilization. And at the bottom of this peaceful painting, we can see three open caskets containing dead girls from different cultures. Left is a black woman, center is a native woman, while they're they lying there and there's an I'm sorry. 
Why are they lying there with the other animals? Are we predicting the extinction of these races? We already know that the military has developed race-specific chemical weapons. The girl on the right holds a Bible and a yellow Juden star used by the Nazi to identify Jews. It seems to symbolize the death of Judeo-Christian beliefs. The group of uh, at the origin of the imagery of this airport are definitely not either Christian nor Jewish. Secret societies have their own belief system that is way too complex to explain here. Children at the world of the world dream for peace. The second mural is a two-part piece and we read it from left to right, so I will analyze it from left to right. Children of all colors dressed in folkloric costumes give weapons wrapped in their country's national flag to a German boy? Huh, yes, the Bavarian costume leaves no doubt. The boy in the center of the image, holding the hammer and apparently building something, is German. Even the American kid, dressed as a Boy Scout, seems eager to give his weapons and the flag to the German boy. You're all in the largest airport in America, in the middle of the USA, and this is a mural we display America joyfully submitting to Germany. It's just too odd to compute. This obviously represents countries in the world giving up their military rights, might, and their nationalism for the common good. Another reference to the New World Order with one world government and one army. But why the German boy is the center of everything? There are so many allusions to Germany and Nazism in this airport, there is no way it can be a coincidence. I can't help but think Operation Paperclip, which brought prominent Nazi scientists and researchers to the USA after World War II, laying at the bottom of the mural is a broken figure holding a rifle representing war, with two doves sitting on top of it representing peace. Heartwarming. Now, follow the, the movement of the rainbow as he starts underneath the statue going around the children and leading you to part two of the mural, which has recently been painted over. The monster is awakened. This big and aggressive materialistic or militaristic figure is dressed in Nazi uniform. Notice the symbol on his hat with a face shaped like a gas mask. Now, the gas mask sounds really significant right now, folks, considering what's going on, doesn't it? His hands are holding a rifle and a scimitar that is rather violently molesting the peace-bearing dove. On the left is depicted an endless lineup of crying parents holding their limp, dead baby. This, is, this painting is horrible. It has no redeeming message or moral. The fact is, it's displaying at the main gate of the largest airport in America during the age of political correctness, the 90s, is <laughs> patently absurd. And in fact, abhorrent. abhorrent. The militaristic figure is glorified and all-powerful, situated at the center of the action. It has regained the powers, but it seemed, it seemed to have lost after World War II, but it's back in full force and it's leading the way to the new Holocaust. Look closely at the people to the left and the dead children sleeping on bricks. There's no traces of violence on them. They're simply devoid of life, as if they were poisoned by the deadly gas emanating from the rainbow above them. The monster protected by the gas mask is pointing the lineup of victims towards the letter on the bottom left. In an actual letter written by, by Hama Herschenberg, 14-year-old, died December 18, 1943, in Auschwitz concentration camp. The presence of the colorful rainbow and teddy bear in this image symbols our minds instantly associate with youth and innocence, a totally sickening and twisted, or it is totally sickening and twisted. One last thing about the scimitar. It is a symbol often used in many of the occultic and Masonic imageries. Peace and harmony of nature. What do you do when you killed most of the world population with toxic gas? You celebrate around the genetically modified glowing plant, of course. Happy people from all over the world insistibly headed towards the plant. Some of almost flying towards it, right up above the plant that doesn't exist in real life is a Jesus-like figure that is definitely not Jesus. All of the instinct species of the first mural are all back in action and you can even see a little dove appearing in the plant. How nice. You feel so much better and there's much less people on earth now. The animals are happy too and they thank you for dying. People are now use high levels of scientific knowledge to live in a state of syn synthesized happiness provided by genetically modified plants. Well, good for them. What these murals depict are massive depopulation of the earth, death of certain belief systems, a one world government, and the restoration of nature. Folks, the swastika is on the runways. Take a look.